a budget finance investment committee and hope everybody got a chance to review the minutes from the September 7th meeting and if so I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Thank you Commissioner Allen. Second. Commissioner Schaefer. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Investment report. Mr. Beatty. Thank you sir. I'll be popular. A lot of people getting mail from you this Get, week. Getting mail this week. They're, they're in the mail. And, uh, uh sir. Uh, that time already? It's that time already. It, it does. It, it's it's three times a year, I believe, it, it mails. It's, <laughs> oh, it's one time, Commissioner. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, just to remind everybody, we are collecting for the town of Smyrna. So if you are a property owner in Smyrna, you're, you'll get one bill from the county that will have the county tax, the Smyrna tax, and a total. And that will be payable uh, to the county on our website. You can mail it. You can come either to the Smyrna location or the Murfreesboro location and pay it. So it should be convenient. And so far, several folks have done that, and it's worked really well. You can make a partial payment on those. Uh, did you add any? Helpful. Did you add any additional staffing to the Smyrna location for that? We we did not, but we are open every day in okay. Smyrna. We were open three days a week. Okay. We're now open five days a week in Smyrna, okay. eight to four, with a break for lunch from 12:30 to one. We maybe kind of gauge that. We we will. Yeah. We will. But the, the 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 great thing is, that everybody was already coming to the county, so we were already seeing. We think there'll be some increase, but very few people go into the city and then mail the county. Where you typically whatever you do, you do. So we think we're seeing them. But by being there every day, it stops the confusion of I can't remember what day, so I drop by. There'll be somebody there every day to take your payment or to take your application. What's the reason why they can't pay through the drive-through? Because that's the county clerk's. Okay. Yeah, and that, the, the clerk and that's does that. So people when they can't pay through the drive-through. It is. Yeah, you you got to you got to you've got to come in. But yeah. uh, but we're on the far left in Smyrna. So don't we put up a sign? Don't get in the line for the clerk. Just come to your left, pass the uh, kiosk, turn left. We're on the far left side. It'll say trustee across the top and just come straight to that uh, to that center. I remember getting dirty looks when I actually read the sign and I walked past everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, they were like, what? So yeah, yeah. yeah. But, the signs so, are hopeful, you're right. And we, yeah, we just, we put a new one, yeah. yes, we're, we're there every day, which is the change. Uh, Another change this year is it not so that if somebody owns multiple pieces of property, those are more than likely in one envelope instead of a stack of envelopes, so that will be a change for people to see in the mail? That, that is a change. If the name and address is the same, your bills will, will come grouped together. And if you have over maybe six parcels, you'll, you'll have a cover sheet that will list all of those and uh, with the bills as well. But the cover sheet will have the barcodes on it. So if you bring those in, we can scan that sheet real quickly to uh, to operate to uh, bring those up for you. Do you have you don't have your online payment system set up yet? Yes, ma'am. RCTrustee.com. They're up. If you don't have your bills, you can go right now. The bills are all there. Everything's accurate. You can print it off. You can print your receipt. You can see your history for past years. You can go ahead and make a payment, a full or a partial payment online with a card. And there is a fee to use a card either in the office or online or with an e-check, which is just $1.50, and you can pay multiple parcels for that. But yes, it's, it's up and going 24-7, 12 months out of the year to use that system. Yeah, the e-check, I've actually been looking at that, and the e-check is, like I said, a dollar and a half. You burn that much gas mm -hmm. or a, a couple of stamps, will. and you spent that, and you can do it right there. Yeah, you can pay multiple parcels yeah. with it, so it's a one-time $1.50 because there's a it's a two dollar and a half fee plus 30 cents for a credit card county doesn't get any of that but that's how they give away uh airline miles and all that stuff the credit card companies charge to do that so we don't keep any of that that's just what the city of has got charge. the exact same setup if i'm not mistaken that's, so people can do it through that, that that's also. correct and, and if you if you're on hours you can click over and go to the murfreesboro on our website just hover over murfreesboro and it'll take you right to their site So, our report. Thank you for letting me, because that's, again, tax time's a big deal. Interest rate on uh, LGIP was 1%, which makes our effective rate 1.26. We had one bid, and that was for uh, 153 basis points uh, this month. Motion to approve, Thank you, Commissioner Allen. Second. Commissioner Fee. 
Any other questions of Mr. Beatty? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, Ted. Thank you. Fund condition report, Ms. Nolan. Okay, starting with development tax. In September, we received 859500 which brings our total for the year $1,429,500. Moving to the cash report, our cash at the end of September totaled $206,092,000 with $168,629,000 being operating funds, $37,463,000 being borrowed funds. I'll have you on this page about midway. There is a amendment later coming to you from the ambulance department for $4,380.97 transfer into this capital projects uh, um, for this project it's completed and we were short that much so that money is coming over from the ambulance fund to complete the project. I've given you revenue it is through the September, but it's really only on a cool basis, just two months of reporting. So I'm not going to go through a lot of time. Two months really doesn't give us a lot of information. Um, we'll look a little closer at this next month when we've got three full months activity coming through. But even looking at the two, it's, you know, it's comparable favorably to the other months for the other five years. Any questions for Ms. Nolan? <coughs> Motion to approve is presented. Thank you, Commissioner Allen. Second. Good. Commissioner Haley. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, risk management financial report. <coughs> Ms. Street, welcome. Hi, How are you tonight? I'm good. How are you? So we'll start with fund uh, 264. For the month of September, revenue ended at 6.1 million compared to expenses of 4.3 million for a difference in revenue and expenses of 1.8 million dollars. In reviewing the calendar period year to date prior versus current, revenue for prior period was 44.6 million compared to current of 48 million with expenses at 50.3 million compared to current of 48.5 million. Reviewing the fiscal period year to date of revenue versus expenses, prior period came in at 8.8 .8 on revenue with current at 9.1 with expenses in prior at 17.4 million compared to current of 15.4. On page three of the report, we'll refer to the 2017 calendar year revenue versus expense comparison. And you'll note that we are currently um, $462,000 um, difference between the revenue expenses and expenses um, to the negative. From a fiscal year comparison, we are currently $6.2 million to the negative, which is common for this time of year for us in a fiscal year. Included in Fund 264 is the legal fees report. In that you'll see that for um, this month for 2016-17 there's a payment of $41,525 and for the current fiscal year we had $43,088 all of which were paid to um, Hudson Region Recruit. There were 31 payments for this month. It's the next document I've had. Should be for the last one. Yeah, it's the last, yeah. Yeah, the insurance is the last one. Yep. I mean, the, the legal, legal is the last one. Referring to Fund 266, year to date we're at $347,605 compared to prior year to date of $112,361. And we currently have eight worker comp claims open. Is that as low as we've been? It's the lowest in seven years. I remember when I was in the insurance committee, you feel like 16, 17, so like, yeah. 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 So. Mm -hmm. It's come way down. 
Any questions of Melissa on her report? Motion to approve the report. Thank you, Commissioner Payne. Second. Commissioner Schaefer. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. We've got an insurance dependent audit. So at the risk management meeting, we presented uh, the finalist, Hodges Mace, to the risk management committee. This is for the dependent audit, specifically for the spouse eligibility component. Um, ongoing in our office, we do um, new hire, spouse, and children um, eligibility determination, as well as full-time student status on dental and vision. This speaks specifically to that spouse eligibility change that occurred in 2016. We have four companies that bid. The lowest bid was Hodges Mace, it came in at $20,776. Um, and we presented that to the risk management um, committee, and it was a unanimous vote to award the contract to Hodges Mace. There's also um, a reimbursement process through Cigna for the dependent audit. We had um, asked about um, dependent audit capabilities during the last bid process that we went for our medical dental vision stop loss and uh, included in the Cigna proposal was an allowance for dependent audit so we'll be able to be reimbursed this money by Cigna. So Hodges Mace came in significantly lower. All the other bids were over $30,000. Do you I don't know how to ask this question. What happens if we find somebody that is supposed to have insurance has been hiding it or something like that? Is there any penalty or anything? Are they just removed from the insurance? Or I would hope most would be oversight instead of somebody trying to slide, lie right. about it or something mm -hmm. like that. No. So they will be removed from insurance. Um, and there is a soft landing process included with Hodges Mace where if um, they you know don't want to go back to their employer's insurance, then they could help them find something else in a private sector or marketplace sector so and they'll have 30 days loss of coverage to go back to their employer as well but there's no payback or anything if somebody's found that they've been untruthful about their disclosure and the county's paid it for the last 12, <clears throat> 12 months or something like that we don't go back after right because there's a lot of uh, tax consequences to retroactively terminating mm -hmm. um, and recalling claims and things like that that we have to be mindful of and so um, the general rule is to terminate at the date in which you learn that they're no longer eligible. Is there any way, and there may not be, but is there any way to, if you, if you find that circumstances are such, they can't go back to their employer, and you, like you said, they, um, this firm was looking at helping them find somebody on the exchange, is there a way to keep them, let them stay on hours, but let, levy some sort of a penalty or price for, so that they don't have that lapse in care? I guess that's the thing. I hate for poor judgment to cause somebody to be without care for 30 days as long as they can. So uh, if we do that, what we have to be mindful of is that that was one of the requests that was made of us by employees at the time that spouse eligibility was changed, that they pay a surcharge to be allowed. So we're almost rewarding those that should not have been in a manner in which we weren't willing to allow all the other employees to um, keep their spouses on it. So my thought would be that we would um, work expeditiously with them in a soft landing approach and close that gap as quickly as we can for their care. I guess part of what I'm thinking on that is just, I wasn't even thinking a small fee or period. I'm thinking more, find out what it would cost them on the open market, charge them that. Mm -hmm. So they're paying, you know, what they would pay if we forced them off the plan. And so what we're doing is letting them stay on the plan but they're still paying what they would have paid if we didn't make that decision. So under federal law, uh, their employer should follow the um, special enrollment period okay. and we'll provide them with a letter so that as long as they go within 30 calendar days from the date of the event, their employer should allow them to add to the date of loss. And will they still have that lapse? They won't have the lapse. They won't. Okay. So that lapse is So this should qualify as a life event or whatever so they will be able to because I know it's, it's only open and rolling at certain times mm -hmm. on those plans, so mm -hmm. this will be a lot Right, it's just like if you have a, you know, you had, you had a baby, you have a child, then you have 30 calendar days from the date of birth. This is one of those qualifying events as well, loss of coverage. Okay. Okay. Well, how many, how many people did they discover this past year? Um, they did well, we did on fall. the front end. So we've yeah. been using the honor system. Right now we validated on the front end. Uh, so there's an attestation that they 
clip. Was this the first this year? This will be the first formal spousal okay. that we've okay. done. Now, we did one in 2010 um, where we brought in a company to do it. And at yeah. that point, um, we, I don't remember what the exact number is, um, but the savings was over $100,000. And they're, they're estimating out of the 1,500 plus dependents, um, they're estimating about 78 that will be removed off of the insurance. Well, what about the 26-year-olds? When they come, does that automatically come yeah, off? Yeah, that just automatically of comes off because of the date of birth in the system. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got a unanimous recommendation from the insurance committee. What is the, oh, go ahead. I got one more question. What is it then that I just approved yesterday that was good purchasing? Yes. Okay, and it's got to be done here too? And uh, full Okay. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't always happen that way, does it? Yes. Maybe, maybe it does with insurance, but yeah. not something else, right? It does on insurance. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Shaker. Second. Okay. Commissioner Allen, any further discussion? Call roll. Commissioner Allen? Aye. Commissioner Ailey? Yes. Commissioner Jernigan? Yes. Yeah. Commissioner P? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Jordan? Yes. Oh, Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Have a good evening. We've got an annual report on fixed assets. And I've been looking around the room for Mr. Brown. Apparently, he'd been watching us on TV in another room or something. He popped up at the same He's time. in the green room. Yeah. <laughs> we got a green room now. I didn't know that. <laughs> well, good afternoon. Today, um, Going to go over the fixed assets report for the fiscal year 2016 17. This year, we have continued to inventory schools and departments with less than 100% of accountability of assets, which many of which we had not inventoried last year. Overall, schools and general departments had a median percentage of 98.21. 21%. Most fell between 97 and 100%. However, 10 schools and 17 county general departments achieved 100% accountability. Many, I mean, missing assets were also down for the seventh year in a row. The capital asset account totals are 1.08 billion with 296 million in accumulated depreciation for a total of 786 million for net capital assets. Our office has also been working to continue selling surplus on the internet. Currently our vendor is GovDeals, which has shown excellent results in achieving a high final bid price. We currently have 60, I mean 60,021 assets in our um, database. Page five is this county general schedule of changes. This is the changes for county general and fixed assets from July 1st, 2016 to June 30th, 2017. On page six, you will find the same report for schools from July 1st, 2016 through June 30th, 2017. Page seven is our changes by function and activity. And this is just broken down by function and activity. It's the same changes that were on the other reports, but it's broken down by function and activity. Page nine, you will find the inventory review results for county general is on the left column and schools are on the right column. It shows the percentages that they achieved this year. Are you still auditing the same number of schools each year or close to it? Yes. I was gonna say this is such a much smaller list than what I've seen in the past. It's amazing. Yeah. It's the same, it's on a rotational cycle. Um, and on to your favorite page, page 11. <laughs> this is the assets that were missing 
during the 2016-2017 fiscal year. Um, it is still down from previous years of what we um, had prior. It's actually down for the seventh year in a row. Can you explain what missing means? Missing means, okay, if we don't see the asset the first time we inventory in this cycle, it's considered remaining, which means we'll search for it the next time we inventory. When the second time comes around, when we inventory and the asset is not seen the second time, it becomes missing, and it's listed here on the missing assets report. You can imagine all these schools and this equipment moves around and around. Sometimes the equipment shows back up. You got 11 items on this list, and you said we've got 60,000 and 20 something. Yes. That's it. Yes. That's not bad. Because they sometimes when they go back the second year, it was in a closet or up under yeah. something, and you find it and it doesn't become missing. And, and realistically, some of this stuff is broken down, and some is fairly small item, it just gets pitched. Right. You're not taken out of inventory. You know, and that's, that's what's always been my concept of what happens to majority. I don't think anybody's out there stealing a laser disc player that was bought in 97. Right. You know, that got broke down and that broke down and got recycled or something and didn't get taken out of inventory correctly, more than likely. Exactly. Now, Robert and his team, they're not 60, somehow many assets? 60,000. 60,000. They're not reviewing 60,000 every I know, year. I know, I know. But, but I want to say the backup is that they send to each of the department, to the schools, and gives them their inventory that this is what they should have. So even though he may not be in there, he sends it to them and what? should be happening is that there's always a, a point person at each of the schools that's responsible for the inventory at that school. So even if Robert's not there, there is somebody there who's doing the inventory. Correct. And page 12, it gives you the summary of totals <laughs> and figures. So it gives you the total, I mean, this is the total of missing. It's the total of the assets that the school or the county department had, and then how many were missing, and then that gives you the percentage uh, from the total that was missing. And it also gives the historical cost of the items. On page nine, you're showing OIT um, accounted for 84.1%, but I'm not seeing them listed on page 11 with anything missing. Because this is the first time this stuff is missing, so it's remaining, <coughs> and we'll search for it again. Okay. And if it's not found the second time, it will be missing, and will okay. show up on this report. Okay. I guess. <laughs> I just want to make sure it wasn't some of the digital, you know, equipment things like that <coughs> weren't showing up, and I was allotting them to the schools, and it should have been OIT. I just want to make sure I was following yes. up. Yes. And. That is basically the rest of it is appendices with the policies and things. So that is all that I have. Is there any kind of a threshold that we try to meet on this? I mean, of course, 100% would be ideal, but I'm just wondering about through comptroller's office or accounting, is there anything that we're held to as a standard of what the goal is? Their, their requirement is to ensure that we are conducting inventories. Motion to approve this report. Thank you, Commissioner Payne. And good job, by the way. Good second. Good. Commissioner Haley. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Robert. We expect to get a little better every year. <laughs> <laughs> Got a general fund budget amount for drug court. Is Mr. You guys handling that for Mr. King? I guess we're going to yes. have to. I think Lisa we can, can do it better. We'll do this in this is to recognize the revenue expenses through the Substance and Abuse Mental Health Administration. We lovingly refer to it as the SAMHSA grant um, for, for the period 930-17 to 630-18. It's the nine months, first nine months of the grant. Money in, money out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. We've got two years and three months to go with this grant. 
Is that correct? <coughs> a thir this yes, is a three year grant. Motion to approve. Thank you, Mr. Schaefer. Second. Commissioner Allen. Call the roll. Commissioner Allen. Aye. Commissioner Ely. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Jerk. Yes. Got an MTSU sub award agreement for drug court. And I think this is part of the SAMS grant. This is a, a contract with MTSU that is performing a part of this grant. So the money for this is in the amendment total that we just passed. We've got to authorize somebody to sign, I would think, and things like that. Yes. All the wishes of the committee. Motion to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Allen. <coughs> Commissioner Schaefer. Call the room. Commissioner Allen. Aye. Commissioner Ely. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. We've got a mental health cooperative memorandum of understanding with drug court. Um, uh, this is related to the SAMHSA grant also. It is between the yeah, mental health mental cooperative health mm -hmm. and the probationary, the um, trace court. Right, drug court. Drug court. It's part of the same 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 program. Same program. Same 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 Motion to approve. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Allen. Commissioner Schaefer. Call her on. Commissioner Allen. Aye. Commissioner Ely. Yes. Commissioner Jurgen. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Jurgen. Yes. Got an acceptance of grant from Tennessee Department of Mental Health and related general fund budget amendment for drug court. Well, drug court. So there's some more of the same thing? Uh, no, it's no, different. No, this is a different one. Different new grants. Yes. This, applies. This, this is, is this the, accepting. This is one we applied for earlier. Is actually we haven't applied for. They gave it to us. The state applied for all veterans mm -hmm. courts in the state mm -hmm. of Tennessee. The federal government. <coughs> no matching funds or anything on this one. No. It's a three-year grant, I believe, in this as well. Three-year grant. Yes. Two hundred eighty-three thousand six twenty-six. Mm -hmm. So is it recurring every year in that amount, or is that no, that's, that's three years? That's total three. for three years. Okay. Year. Does it and include so hiring anybody? Yes. Part-time. Yes. Part -time. No, not full-time. One part-time, a part-time plus a full-time. Yeah, therapist. And a what happens when the grant runs out? Well, no promises. We'll have to evaluate. Make sure, we'll I want to make sure they're hired with the understanding their job might not be here when this grant runs out. That was brought up the first time it came. Oh, it came yeah. It usually is. Yeah. I love to bait you with that. Get you a staff of people and take your money while you're stuck with it. Can we ask Sonia if that's something that she qualifies when they do the hiring? Or I, I guess they, I mean, it's therapists since they've been there doing, is it contract work? Sonia, you want to? No, we'd be Sonia actually question. hiring someone. Yeah. <coughs> when you have a position that's been um, funded By through a grant and then the grant money goes away, when we hire that person, do we let them know that? Oh, absolutely. When we post the position, okay. it's actually on the posting, and we put it in bold and sometimes a different color and say, okay. please note this is a grant funded position. Um, the term, the um, length of the, the grant is from here to here uh, and is subject to reevaluation at that time. And then also, when we bring them on, we also have them sign a form that they know that it is a grant funded position and it's not guaranteed. Uh, employment beyond the term of the grant. Excellent. Motion to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Allen. Second. Second. Commissioner P. Mm -hmm. Call roll. Commissioner Allen. Aye. Commissioner Ely. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Got a general fund budget amendment. We got some general fund budget amendments for the sheriff's office. <laughs> yes. President. Easy. Mr. Sheriff, Easy. how are y'all tonight? Uh, First two amendments are removed from the jail. Apparently, we owe Dr. Rudd money. <laughs> so the first one is to settle our physical, our last fiscal year of amount to him for the amount of two hundred thirty-four thousand one hundred seventy-eight dollars. This is for the off-site medical. Off-site, yes, indirect off-site. Committee want to take these separate? They're both coming out of unassigned fund balance. Look like there's going to be pain in both of them, or do you want to? 
Go ahead with the next one, unless I don't. We'll see what I, what motion comes forward. Oh, the next one is we're taking the five thousand from the unassigned to put in our four nine nine, which is to assist us in our locational training in the greenhouse for our inmates. This uh, is this is for future employment. That's what you're doing. It's for both. That's what yeah. we're concentrating yeah. on right now is our vocational training. Of, so we're with our educational building, and we're building two other greenhouses. And this is what's going to help us finish out those two other greenhouses. Have you had any luck with any in the past vocational training? Getting I can't people say. hired? We've had three placements uh, so far, and I mean, actually, we don't have any programs that are off the ground and running, but these are the ones that there's kind of off of what we've been working on. And uh, through the contacts that we've made with some employers, we were able to place three people that uh, were coming out of our facility. Uh, one of them forklift operator, uh, we had certifications and we were able to get the employers together and uh, was hired and then we've had uh, two other placements uh, with uh, production type jobs. Well good. And uh, so I mean it's it's a vision that it, it works and we know it works and we, so it, it gives us uh, incentive to keep going in the direction that we're going. Right. Are those numbers informal tracking that you're keeping, or do you have a formal tracking system? Well, right now it's informal because we really are still trying to put these programs together. Uh, but through contacts that we've made with various people trying to garner interest in the program, uh, we were able to place these people with the people we've been talking with. So actually it's not a formal tracking right now because we uh, are just trying to get these programs in place. As, you, as it matures and you get to the point where you can have, oh, we have I would trust. love for you to do that because I think you're going to have some real success stories and I think we're going to really enjoy hearing those numbers. So. Uh, our, our jail administrators uh, do stay, in, I mean not in form, but they do stay in touch with these people because uh, our interest is to make sure that they're placed but then to make sure that they're staying. Yeah. And, and so far the success has been there because all three of them are still there. I said both these were for unassigned fund balance and technically they are, but the second one is money that rolled back into unassigned at the end of the budget year that after correct? Anderson and just, just putting correct. it back that's in. Donations. So that's, donations. That, 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 this donation that was your money to start well. with. It's yes, just got to be put back yes, in the right yes, line. Yes, and this particular one, too, it's it's expenses <clears throat> that occurred from the prior year. Yeah. The first one. The first one. Dr. Dr. And, and it's both the Sheriff's Office and Correctional Work Center's uh, money. In this one, isn't it? No, no this, this is, is just purely uh, our money. But we knew it was coming, mm -hmm. and, but it can't come until the end of the fiscal year. The workhouse yeah. also, I mean, there's a, a settlement on that one too. We're just hoping that we don't have to amend that one until maybe the end of the year. We're just kind of watching. We're going to we're going to pay that one out of line current item year. in current year, oh, and, and hopefully we don't have we'll have enough surplus that we don't use that we don't have to do an amendment. Okay. But don't be surprised if it comes up more toward the end of the year. Yeah, we'll have to see we'll, we'll remind you of this day. <laughs> yeah. Even though in the future, I mean, we <clears throat> forward we have bid these together, but they, they, they're bid separately also because they're uh, two separate budgets completely. So, uh, yeah. so when we get down to the, this part of it, we have to separate it. Commissioner Pay, do you have a comment? Yeah, I, just a question on this first one. What Can you explain to me the what indirect cost and off-site medical is. I think I know, but I want to be sure. A hospital stay, of course, would be off-site. Okay. Uh, indirect cost would be anything like they go to a doctor. It, anything would be outside back, of our facility that requires medical care, or if uh, for some reason it's a type of an x-ray or a type of an MRI that we cannot do in our facility because of the nature of the ailment or whatever. Uh, if you all remember when we were talking about there's a 1.4 million dollar cap that uh, we go up to and it's included on these all-site costs anything that exceeds you you've got a part that falls in the 1.4 and then you've got a part that exceeds and and that's a part of this uh, because it was in the previous contracts also before we rebid this uh, so this is anything that takes place uh, that is not in our facility we try to do everything in-house that we can, but there's just some medical procedures uh, that, that we can't because we're not equipped for it. All right. Thank you. I know in the past, I guess it's still happening, Dr. Rudd has negotiated these costs down. 
Dr. Rudd. Astounding uh, amounts, what I remember in the past. Right. So we're not paying full blown retail for an MRI. No, sir. It's going off the hospital. I know he he beats that price down. Well, he goes over and meets with yeah. the facilities uh, anytime that we get into a situation like this. Of course, one of the advantages that we've got too is when we get into a hospital stay, which is off site, it falls into this 1.4 million cap. He goes and physically visits and uh, they even get into a point how long that stay is going to be and he's able to shorten that stay quite a bit because there are some things that we can do on site uh, that normally a patient wouldn't have access to but, but since we've got medical on site then he's able to get these people back quicker than he normally would. I was just trying to make the point for people watching at home that we're not spending taxpayer <coughs> dollars like it's free money. I mean, I, I know he's negotiated bills at Vanderbilt down and things like that, <coughs> tremendous amounts in the past, and I feel sure he's still doing well, that the, type of thing. He does that type of thing, and yeah. of course the other thing too that we do is any time that we get into a state inmate, then he, he actually goes and negotiates with the state for reimbursement, which not all facilities have that. Uh, so there, there's another advantage that we have of, of things that he does for us. Well, I, I, that brings up a question. We were at the Regional County Commissioners Association meeting this last week, and uh, a statement was made that we do not have to keep a prisoner, a state prisoner, that we can call the state and they will come get him. Well, we, <laughs> trust me, those calls go daily. Uh, we don't we don't want to keep them any longer than we have. Well, I'm, I'm just wanting to know how true that statement was. <laughs> uh, so we it depends on whether they have a bed or not. Yeah, it depends. A it's, cell available. They've got to have a cell available. <clears throat> uh, and you've got to look at this. That we're in competition with 94 other counties for that same cell. And uh, so we have a person that one of the things that they do on a daily basis is looking for state beds and that we can transfer to place. Um, sometimes we're able to transfer three, uh, we have transferred up to 12. So it's, it just depends on the availability. But uh, that's a daily look and a daily call. I think right now we've got, last count I believe was 152 over housing in our facility right now. We need to and that's down from 253, so, so we're pushing very hard to we'll get them out just as quick as we can. Maybe Charles can give us some pointers, so like they said, who made that statement. Yeah. But I, I, they, they're continuously working on that. It's, well, I mean, I, I've heard the same story you told me just now in the yeah. past, so you know, that's the one I That's the reality, so, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a cold reality that there's just not enough inmate beds or inmate facilities in the state system uh, to house a number of state prisoners that we've got. Uh, but this is a problem, not just ours. I mean, this is a statewide problem. Thank you. We've got two amendments, amendments before us. We'll entertain a motion for both or break them up, whatever the wishes of the committee are. I'll make a motion to approve both of them. This money we owe, so we, we don't have a lot of choice here. Thank you, Commissioner Payne. Second. Commissioner mm -hmm. Ely. Call roll. Commissioner Alec. Aye. Commissioner Ely. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Jordan. Yes. A drug fund budget transfer. I need to take some money out of the 319 confidential and put in our vet services. Uh, we had an unfortunate incident with Fargo who broke his elbow. Mm -hmm. And a uh, drug fund or narcotics is willing to help pay for that surgery that he had. So in the past, I think three or four years, they've not put anything in vet yeah. services. So we will draw from that to assist with that general fund account. Thank you, Commissioner Jernigan. Second. Second. Commissioner Schaefer. Call the roll. Mr. Allen? Aye. Mr. Ely? Yes. Mr. Jernigan? Yeah. Mr. P? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Jordan? Yes. I have a follow-up question. Uh, you said that they haven't been willing to. Who decides? Uh, uh, not willing. They have okay. not done. Uh, not done. It's just, just us coming in. I noticed okay. they didn't have a vet services anymore okay. or I would have paid for it. But that's something you oversee in the, in the allocation. And we were okay. able to. I mean, okay. So that's what we're doing. Okay. I misunderstood. So it makes it sound like there was a, somebody they oh, out no, there. No, no, no. <laughs> so, no, no. Okay. One of the Yes, didn't have it. Yes. Okay. 
Starting track the other day. Thank you. I'm still looking for they. And they are canine dogs. Must so they, they follow. Well, they're drug related dogs, and yes, so that's why I thought yeah. we can do this. Okay. We've got a request to pop. Firehouse Sub Public Safety Foundation grant for the Sheriff's Office. Yeah, you know, this is a grant. Uh, we have a throw phone that we use in crisis negotiation or a barricaded suspect that we physically <laughs> do not able to make contact with them via uh, landline or cell phone. Uh, this is a heavy duty phone that we can throw through a window if necessary. The one we've got presently is 20 years old, so it's seen a lot of wear and tear. Uh, this is a no matching grant of uh, 25,000 through Firehouse Subs. Uh, we've got an estimate cost of $24,211 on the new phone. And, uh, this is uh, a request uh, for us to go after this grant. Most okay. approved. Duct tape and an iPhone one more. <laughs> it doesn't look like it. Too, are we? Uh, yeah. <coughs> Sometimes the phone comes back at us, so when we throw it back at us, but you know. So. Uh, motion by Commissioner P. Second by Commissioner Jernigan. Call the roll. Commissioner Hall? Aye. Commissioner Ely? Yes. Commissioner Jernigan? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Commissioner Jernigan? Yes. Okay, the uh, uh, request to apply for administration, administrative office of the courts grant for the sheriff. The administrative office of the courts has uh, money and funds available uh, to improve courtroom security and provide safe and secure facilities. And uh, what we're wanting to do is apply uh, for monies out of this grant, uh, a total of $262,600. Uh, in this grant, it requires a 10% match by the county of $26,260. And uh, what this is for is, is preparing for the new courthouse. Uh, obviously a much bigger facility. Uh, these radios are top of the line type radios that will allow us to penetrate the several floors that we're going to be all the way from the basement level all the way through to the top floor. Uh, it's a much stronger radio, much better radio, and has much more capabilities than the type of radios that we use now. So we thought with this type of a grant, then uh, this would give us an opportunity to seek to see if they would give us the funding to do this. Motion to approve the request Thank you. for the grant. Commissioner Schaefer. I'll second that. Commissioner P. Is it the radio or is it the repeaters in the It's building? a Motorola radio. It's a, it's a radio. Okay. It's a very uh, high-tech radio. Expensive. It says 35 radios and 35 earpieces. And yep. so that's that's how many people you're expecting, that staff level that will be assigned just, assigned just to the courthouse? Not only the courthouse, but then you've got transport officers that are in okay. the courthouse who are going to be going up and down with prisoners in the uh, elevators and the floors. So it, it's, it's the totality <coughs> of uh, the courthouse plus our transport officers who will be in and out of the courthouse constantly. And this is something we're going to need regardless of the grant more than likely. Yes, sir. So hopefully this grant will work out and just cost us 10 cents on the dollar. That's, that's good. <laughs> We've got a motion and a second. Call the roll. Commissioner Allen? Aye. Commissioner Ely? Yes. Commissioner Jernigan? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Commissioner Jordan? Yes. You all have a good evening. Thank you very much. Well, we got that. We, got yeah. we, so we had it under finance, finance, but it's, and sure. it's really oh, theirs. That's all finance here. Yeah. And that's why it's really theirs. We're doing it because it's it all been, he was it's it's all the right approvals. Right. It's already come through. You approved the grant. General uh, fund budget amendment. And so now finance, the, all this is just okay. putting the money into the budget. The revenue of thirty-five thousand four seventy-five, and for the overtime. The highway safety office grant. Right, that's the correct. alcohol enforcement grant. Yep. That's why we just went ahead and did it. So. Motion to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Allen. Second, Commissioner Schaefer. Call the roll. Commissioner Allen. Aye. Commissioner Ely. Yes. <coughs> Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Jordan. Yes. I, I, thought it, I thought that's it. We're done this time. It'll do right. That's for sure. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Y'all have a good evening. Appreciate it. We've got a general fund budget transfer for human resources. Go ahead. Ms. Davis, welcome. Hello. Okay. There we go. Back to the Um. 
our contract with uh, NeoGov, which is the online application, the onboarding program that we have, um, they have increased the software, which during the budget time I heard several software agreements going up, but ours ends the end of October and they went up $1,300. Um, so I'm hoping with the things that we're doing in our drug testing, um, the way we've done our protocols, that we're going to be reducing the amount of money we spend so that I'll have to take this out of the general fund, the unassigned fund balance, that I can use it within my own. So I'm asking to transfer it at this time. Motion to approve. Thank you, Commissioner <coughs> Allen. Uh, Commissioner Jernigan? Follow up. Commissioner Allen? Aye. Commissioner Ely? Yes. Commissioner Jernigan? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Jordan? Yes. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. That was easy. Amulet Service Fund Budget Amendment. This is the one Your I went into that? earlier, the $4,381 to close the project, the capital project of building the, the Amulet Service Fund. Motion to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Allen. Second. Commissioner Jernigan. Call the roll. Mr. Allen. Aye. Mr. Ely? Yes. Mr. Jarga? Yes. Mr. P? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Jordan? Yes. We've got a general fund budget amendment for unclaimed property refunds. Okay, and I'll just read this from the bottom of the disbursement of property sale proceeds from Chancery Court in 2012 was returned from the unclaimed property division. Uh, the state to us, you know, we, if you remember those um, resolutions we do at the end of the year to get the unclaimed property back, this is some money that came from Chancery to the state, back to us, and now that person is claiming their money back. So it's a long way around to get it, but this was received in prior years, so we need to amend the budget out of our unassigned and have it available to pay these people their monies. Well, we knew that when we started doing this every year, that somebody could come and want their money back. Right. So this is exactly this is it. That. This was a big one. Yeah. And there's no statute of limitations. They can come whenever, as long as they have sufficient right. proof. Yeah, that's actually part of the resolution that we have to keep the money available. Okay. It's not a bad idea and to go in and change to and claim property for yourself. Well, we got, to we see got if the use anything. of their money until. Yeah. Right. yeah. Motion approved. Thank you, Commissioner Allen. Second. Second. Commissioner Ely. Colorado. Commissioner Allen. Aye. Mr. Ely? Yes. Mr. Jernigan? Yes. Mr. P? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Jernigan? Yes. Got a resolution to issue general obligations fuel bonds. Yes. This is just uh, This is now the, the hard copy giving us the authority to borrow money for the projects that you have approved. And I'm reminding you that it was for what we're borrowing for is Oakland Middle Annex, uh, Smyrna Metal Renovation. Uh, let's say the Oakland Middle, one third of the cost of that project was funded by the Board of Education. So this represents two thirds. Uh, Smyrna High, Smyrna Middle renovation is $1 million. This was an increase at the end of the last year. But anyway, it was a, that cost a little more, so you've already approved that one. Uh, Rockville High School at $70,813,500. There's this small amount for the restrooms and concessions that um, was approved is just not the whole project, just architect. the architect. Just Thank you. Um, Sickle High School at six million and the seventh and eighth grade portion for the Laverne Middle Annex. Now I talked with Sam and you were saying um, you know, borrow it in stages or, or what, but the school has you know, several schools behind this one. And speaking with Spank, with Sam, he just mentioned that we probably need to go ahead and, and do this. Um, and the assumptions that he's used is at 3%, but if we sell it today, he thinks it would be less than at 3%. He said there's a lot of talks. You've heard about the IRS reducing, or the reducing income rates. When that happens, there's really not a reason for people to our bonds because mm -hmm. their tax rate is lower, so that puts pressure on it. Um, he said uh, that, let's see, also the possibility of a tax cut could increase the deficit, which can increase U.S. borrowing and could increase interest rates. The feds can also influence rates, and, and they've indicated, I think so, I can't remember who mentioned this last time, that they've indicated they might raise rates again in December. <coughs> 
uh, there's a couple of these things that is he's feeling pressure that we put, probably go ahead and get these bonds doubled in November, which is why we're doing this today. I know in the third paragraph we try to write it pretty broad mm -hmm. to give us flexibility, but um, is is there any value in attaching maybe not to the resolution but maybe to the minutes or something a schedule that you like you read out? I think sometimes it would be helpful to you know just kind of keep in keep track of. You'd have to come back to this committee he, and the full we, commission to spend the money any other way. Right. We're, but uh, are you saying? It's broad. You would like to see it narrow? No, no, I, no. Too much uh, list in the schools yeah, and the just minutes. Like, well, like you oh, just, just the minutes, yeah. yeah, that's oh, all yeah. I'll put it in the minutes. Yes, yeah. maybe. Yes. I just think that would be helpful to look back. back. I mean, each. Yeah, yeah to look back. Honestly, exactly. each one of these bond issues this has is got a folder all onto itself, a big, large book all onto itself with the borrowings and a list of everything that we borrow. But if someone wanted to find it easily, they could. See it in the minutes. In the minutes. That's fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that's a good idea. And that's probably you could still go back because we've kind of talked about doing it anyway. anyway. So I'm sure it is. Well, we've had comments from the public yeah. too that we borrow money and then spend it on other things. Uh, other things. Other things. And that's not that's not the case. I mean, it's more complicated. And, <laughs> and really, we don't because we these resolutions. This one that kind of ties us in is going to be for school construction and improvements. I, just, I think people don't understand in the internal borrowing that we do sometimes. So. That's just advanced yeah. funding right. that will right. ultimately we're going to take it out and right. pay ourselves back. Pay ourselves back, yeah. I'll make a motion to approve as presented. Thank you, Commissioner Allen. Second. Commissioner P. Further discussion? I will point out that this is a bond issuance of $87.850,000. Million, million we have talked about this in great debt. debt voted on every project at every committee level all the way up to all the projects. So it's not like we just came in there and said we're going to borrow $87 million. This is just a homework part, the cleaning up of a year's worth of work. So. Now in this, and there's a page, I'll have to find it for you, but there's 249000 in that number that you just quoted, 249000 estimated issuance cost. On top of that would be the underwriter's discount, which while they tap it, in the resolution at one percent is generally a lot lower than that. Mm -hmm. Call the roll. Commissioner Allen? Aye. Commissioner Ailey? Yes. Commissioner Jernigan? Yes. Yeah. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Commissioner Jordan? Yes. We've got a lease agreement with the state of Tennessee for 1132 <coughs> Haley Rose. That's the rehab center and uh, this is a five-year lease agreement and the rent is eighteen thousand dollars per year so this same amount of money and uh, for the same function and purpose. They've just made their lease agreement a whole lot more sophisticated and took us a bit of time to work through all the stuff we had to submit to them. I thought we just had a handshake deal all those years ago. <laughs> what the wishes of the committee? Motion approved. Thank you, Commissioner Jernigan. Second. Commissioner Allen. Call the roll. Commissioner Allen. Aye. Commissioner Ely? Yes. Commissioner Jernigan? Yeah. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Commissioner Jernigan? Yes. Any other bids come for us tonight? If not, we are adjourned. Thank you very much. Yes.